Wednesday, everyone. And can you believe that uh, in two more days is Christmas? This is Christmas Eve, Eve right? I remember as a child uh, with my sister and my brother, days before Christmas, like four days before, we would say, you know, this is Christmas Eve, Eve, Eve. And then second day and third day until it came down to Christmas Eve. And then we were so excited I couldn't sleep. And I'm still like that. Um, I'm a big kid, even though I'm 41 years old, uh, which makes it a lot of fun in our house. But uh, I'm excited today that we have prepared our hearts uh, to celebrate the first coming of Jesus Christ. And uh, today we are picking it up in chapter 2 of Luke, verse number 7. We have been gleaning our thoughts from Luke chapter 1 and 2 the past few weeks. And uh, there's one more Wednesday in this series that will be next Wednesday. So if you have your Bible or your app, I want you to turn to Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse number 7, and we're going to read down to verse number 20. So we have Mary and Joseph who are now in Bethlehem uh, out against their own will. Uh, they are home for Christmas uh, based upon a, um, a government mandate and... Uh, Things did not feel good and did not look good, but it was God's timing. And I trust that this week that you've had moments where you felt the love of God in Christ Jesus being manifest in your life. So in verse number seven says that while they were there, she, Mary, gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in, in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region, there were shepherds uh, staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And the angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. I would be too. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began to say to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem. And see the things that has happened, which the Lord had made known to us. So they came in haste. They came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay there in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were uh, wondering at the things wondered at the things which they were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard, just as had been told them. Isn't that amazing? There's something, though, that I want us to be mindful of. The first people to hear the proclamation of the gospel the good news of Jesus were shepherds. Now that might not mean a whole lot to us, but culturally, from what we can gather, shepherds were those that did not make the cut. They were the ones that weren't as smart or as talented or, or as strong as the other siblings of the family. Shepherds were the ones that were out tending flocks while the others were uh, working or, or in military or uh, doing things that were different productivity that the father of the household would deem necessary. We first see that in David. David was a shepherd boy way back in the Old Testament. Uh, while his brothers were at war, were fighting in the military with Saul, the king, David was out in the field keeping watch of his father's flocks. He was not as strong. He probably wasn't as talented or as whatever the case may be. But it is amazing that God often chooses 
and more often than not, chooses the lowly things of the world to confound the wise, the simple things the Bible says. And here we have the most promising thing for you and I. This wasn't just an accident. The Holy Spirit, in his eternal wisdom, knew that it needed to be in divine script that would last for all generations right down today to speak into your and my life that it was the shepherds, the most uh, unqualified, the least, the not as smart, that God chose through an angel to tell them the good news that the Messiah had come. John chapter 3 verse 16 is probably one of the most well-known scriptures among people who don't even know the Bible. And already in your mind, you're, you're reiterating the words in your head. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. The angel said that, didn't he? When he appeared to the shepherds, he said, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all people. I'm glad it is not for those who can afford it because I couldn't afford it. I'm glad that this message is not for the most brilliant because I wouldn't be smart enough to pass the exam. I'm thankful that it's not for the most talented I'm thankful that it's not for the, the elite. I'm thankful that this gospel message, this good news of Jesus Christ, is for the whosoever. I am thankful that it is for me and you, for your neighbor, your family member, your coworker. We are the shepherds. We're the ones that being revealed to by God through a messenger. And could it be that messenger is me today? Speaking life into you and saying, God has come for you. This is good news of great joy for you. You're a part of the whosoever. I'm a part of the whosoever. So no matter where you're at today, lift your voice in celebration. Come and worship before him because you can't afford this. You're not more talented than anyone else. You cannot impress God. Come just as you are. It is for the upper class, the lower class, the wealthy, the poor. Doesn't matter the color, the shade of your skin, the language you speak. It is for the whosoever will. I challenge you today. As a messenger from God, like the angel was that first Christmas, come and worship and come and see Jesus.